Hello everybody, I'm Dr. John Oldham, Chief of Staff at the Menninger Clinic. Welcome back to our series of podcasts that we call Menninger Mindscape. We have a very interesting guest today who's a member of our faculty here at Baylor and also a consultant for us here at the Menninger Clinic, Dr. Sanjay Matthew. And to tell you just a word or two, Dr. Matthew is Associate Professor of Psychiatry here at Baylor. Um, he's also the Brown Foundation Chair of the, of the uh, Psychopharmacology of Mood Disorders and is an expert, done a lot of work studying mood disorders. Um, one of the things that we do, and welcome Sanjay, we're Thank you. glad to have you here to tell us a little bit of what you do. Um, one of the things that we see fairly often here at Menninger is depression. Depression is a very prevalent condition and one that really is extremely disabling. It's treatable, but it doesn't always respond easily to treatment, and you know a whole lot more about that than I do. Um, but when patients come here, they've often been through earlier efforts to get help and sometimes have what's called treatment refractory depression or depression that hasn't really responded that well to the usual treatments. And that's pretty tough for families and for patients. So you've been very interested in some new approaches, uh, lots of efforts underway to try to get to some new and better treatments or ones that would work for those uh, who don't respond to the usual ones. Uh, and one in particular one is the use of an interesting medication or drug called ketamine. A lot of interest in that throughout the country. So let me stop talking and let you talk and tell us a little bit about that sort of approach and, and what you've been learning. Yeah. So I'll start by saying that one of the major challenges in the treatment of depression is how slow onset the medications often are. So most patients, even if they do respond, may take two, three months to have a, a good response to an antidepressant. And those are two to three months of misery. Often, or longer. Yeah. And so ketamine is a anesthetic drug that's been used for many years by anesthesiologists and pain medicine doctors and was more recently discovered to offer a very quick acting approach for depression, where patients after a single infusion could experience relief of their depressive symptoms within several hours, as opposed to two, three months, two, three hours. Boy, that's but, pretty amazing. And you use the word infusion, so you mean it's given intravenously like you might get as an anesthetic? Yes, exactly. So it's given through an IV, but at a dose that is what's called sub-anesthetic. So instead of a dose that you would be asleep or under anesthesia, you're awake throughout the usually 40-minute infusion. And that, that's sort of an example, if there are others certainly in medicine that we hear about a lot, of sort of serendipitous discovery. Even the very first antipsychotic um, was really clopromazine that was found uh, to be helpful just by chance. How, how, was, how was this effect discovered? very much by serendipity and the result of some experiments done initially at Yale looking at how ketamine works in the brain. And one of the leading theories at that time is ketamine works on a chemical system called glutamate. Glutamate is the main amino acid in the brain. It's found in 80% of brain cells. And so there was a lot of basic work into this system which was a very different system than the systems we all know about in psychiatry, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine. And it was discovered really by serendipity that if you infuse ketamine into a group of individuals with chronic depression, they get better much faster. But the initial intent was not to discover an antidepressant, it was to learn more about the brain. But so you're participating in, 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 in leading some studies uh, to try to learn more about this. Um, give us some examples of um, maybe just, just what you've seen in terms of how it, how it works. So what we've seen are patients who often describe as the weight of the world on their shoulders or a, f a feeling of being so demoralized that they're in a dark hole that there's a reemergence. So after the infusion they may feel literally lighter, they feel more joyful, they feel more positive and so feelings that they haven't experienced in many years. 
And so the challenge for us now is to figure out how to maintain that benefit. And, and do we know much about that yet in terms of how durable and lasting this effect is? Some patients, a single infusion will result in 30 days plus of complete relief of symptoms, which is quite a remarkable, sure um, even if they're not on other medications. Other patients will have a two-day response. So it's a very wide range. And so what we're working on now is trying to figure out what are some of the predictors of who does very well for a long time and how do you, how do you maintain that either with giving more ketamine or, or other approaches. Right. Now, now, is this available to somebody out there who would just be suffering from depression and say, I'd like to try this? Right now, it's not FDA approved for depression. There are a number of clinics around the country who offer ketamine, both at university settings as well as in private clinics. So, so it is available, although there's a lot of unknowns, and so that should be kept in mind. Right. Well, one thing that uh, you and I are participating in, um, recently the Menninger Clinic and Baylor Psychiatry were asked to join what's called the National Network of Depression Centers, which is really a wonderful effort, and it's a network of centers, about 21 of them at this point, I think, across the country, modeled on the Cancer Center Network, uh, and really with some of the same goals, to do research, learn more about good treatment for depression, but also help sort of work against uh, the bad stigma that's out there about all kinds of things. And I believe there's a multi-center trial that's being at least organized by, by the national network. You and I will both be on the board. We've just recently joined. Um, but you're going to take the lead on our site. But this is a different kind of ketamine, isn't it? Yes. So ketamine has a, a form of ketamine called S-ketamine. It's a chemical derivative of ketamine that's used in Europe. The advantage of that is it's more potent. By being more potent, there may be less side effects. So this was introduced to the US. We're now gonna embark on a study with some of these other National Depression Network sites, looking not only at this unique compound, but a unique way of giving the drug. So instead of using an IV, which is invasive and, and so on, you, you do it intranasally. So through a nasal application, you can administer this drug. Which would be a big improvement for people who, if it gets to the point that it gets FDA approved for use, uh, could use it at home. It's kind of like an inhaler if you have asthma um, uh, and, and would be available in a way that would be much easier to use and more broadly uh, effective and hopefully helpful. Um, we. We're going to never have enough time, and so we probably don't have time to uh, talk about this anymore, but it's really an interesting study, and in the middle of a whole portfolio of work that you're doing with colleagues here at Baylor and at Menninger, and also across the country, and you have, I know, a number of uh, studies that have been sponsored by the NIMH, looking at everything we can learn about ways to help people who have not just depression but other mood disorders such as bipolar disorder uh, and related conditions. So we're really delighted that you're now, actually it's a fairly recent development, uh, here one afternoon a week at Menninger uh, to help us uh, in, in particular case consultations, but also very excited to look at uh, what may come out of this research. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you also for joining us uh, to the viewers, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.